the 1980s and the 1990s, the regional variation for the use of something like PCI, as basic as PCI, varied tremendously across the country. Now, because of the registries, we can get a little bit more fine-tuned, and even with hospital, hospital to hospital uh, differences, they can sometimes be striking. So we're here at the AHA meeting 2015 to talk about the utilization of CRT among eligible patients receiving an ICD, insights from the NCDR ICD registry. And for this, I'm talking to Dr. Lucas Marzek, who is a fellow in cardiac electrophysiology at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. I remember all those, those maps from the 1980s and 90s. There was this huge variation. Now we're starting to get down to a little bit more tight control in terms of who's doing what, and that's what you were looking at, right? That's correct. It's well known that there's variation in a number of different strategies to improve outcomes related to cardiovascular disease. You mentioned PCI, implantable defibrillators are another where there's a lot of regional variation and hospital level variation in how many or a proportion of patients are implanted with defibrillators. But before our analysis, it was unknown whether or not the same variation existed with regard to cardiac resynchronization therapy. And there certainly are guidelines to guide CRT implantation and guidelines for ICD implantation. So what did you analyze and what did you find? Yeah, so we looked at the NCDR ICD <laughs> registry for patients who had a guideline-based indication for cardiac resynchronization therapy either by the 2008 guidelines or the focused update, which, were published, which was published in 2012. And we looked to see what proportion of those patients received cardiac resynchronization therapy and whether or not the proportion of patients who did receive CRT varied by hospital. And we found that there was a significant amount of variation in the percentage of patients receiving CRT by hospital, anywhere from some hospitals where 100% of eligible patients were implanted with CRT down to 23% uh, at some hospitals. Now, if you've got a hospital that's serving a poor community that may not have the insurance necessary, you can understand some variations. Did you adjust for things like that to see if, if a hospital is essentially serving the same population as another hospital somewhere else? Were there variations still, despite the fact of the similarities in theory? We did. So, as you mentioned, insurance status is one factor that may play a role in whether or not a patient is implanted with a CRT device or any device, though it, those sorts of factors are often uh, affect the decision whether or not to plant any device, not necessarily a CRT device. Right. Other patient factors uh, may include race, patient sex, and other demographic variables. We adjusted for the identified patient, uh, provider, and hospital level factors that we could within the NCDR, and even adjusting for those factors, there still remained a significant amount of hospital variation in the rate of CRT use. Why? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I know that wasn't part of your study, but yeah. why? Uh, we, we don't know. Uh, it's hard to guess exactly why uh, that may be. It may be related to technology, certainly EP or electrophysiology trained providers at a higher rate of CRT use as compared to those not trained in electrophysiology. And so in a center where there isn't uh, electrophysiology expertise that may have played a role. Uh, but we found a number of factors are associated with the use of CRT. And so further work needs to be done to understand why that variation exists and then approve rates of CRT use in eligible patients who may benefit from the therapy. There's a new Jack EP uh, journal. So maybe we should get more people to read that so that they understand <laughs> more about what is supposed to be done. Yeah, certainly I think publishing these findings is important to have a good understanding of the, defining the problem and use of CRT. In some centers, as few as 23% of people were receiving CRT devices and having a better understanding of why that is, is really important to improving the rate of use of the therapy. Now, in the past, there's actually been some indication that women do better with, with CRT. Uh, so in your analysis, I know you adjusted for that. Did you also look specifically at women and, and then compare, you know, based on gender, are they getting as much CRT? Are they getting less? Did yeah, you we do that analysis? Uh, we did, and as you mentioned, there's some suggestion that women have a preferential benefit to CRT over men. Um, we did look at patient sex as a risk factor or a predictor of CRT use. And so, contrary to what you would expect, we did not find a difference in the rate of CRT use between men and women. And so that was not something that seemed to predict CRT use either at the patient level or in our entire cohort or across hospitals. I mean, on the one hand, it's good. There's equality. On the other hand, if there is data showing that maybe they do get some extra benefit, maybe those numbers could be improved a little bit. Correct. You know, you sort of, you, it's hard to know. We can't say for certain. You right. might imagine the lack of a gender disparity in some cases may be, uh, reflect poor practice in the sense that 
people who should get the therapy aren't. However, you want to see disparity, and we just don't know enough based on our analysis to suggest what role gender is playing in the variation. Well, we have a variety of NCDR papers that are being presented here at the HA 2015 uh, meeting. Please check online for our video interviews, but also in the books, because CardioSource World News and CardioSource World News Interventions has the news for you. And I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.